Tukirejelea ile taarifa yetu ya hapo awali ni kwamba makundi mbalimbali ya Wakenya yanazidi kutoa maoni yao kuhusu mapendekezo ya sheria za ushuru huku wengi wakilalamikia kuongezeka kwa mzigo huo wa ushuru. Wadau hawa wanasema kuwa pesa nyingi zinapotea kupitia ufisadi huku wananchi wakiteseka kulipa ushuru. Tusikilize yanaojiri kwenye ripoti hiyo. Uh, chair and, and I apologize for maybe that confusion. I think it is coming to the HS codes. We were witnessing um, the launch of a new label plant the other day in Tilisi, a factory that produces 10 million labels a day. It's 3.6 billion labels a year based in Tilisi. And, and they produce all of these kind of labels and everything we see on all these packaging, edible oils and all the major brands. And what I understood from that meeting was that they use a lot of specialized inks. Uh, which then are not locally manufactured. So I've got a very strong belief that the, myth, the, the issue here is about what is those specialty inks that are used as raw material vis-a-vis -vis what you're saying is the finished product, which might be the retail inks. Yeah? And retail inks we see in stationary stores, etc. Yeah? So I think allow the, the team to go back and clarify with the large producers or who use inks in their production as raw material to state which of those inks they're not getting locally so we have clarity on this matter so it's very similar to the float glass issue okay yeah. that's fine so, so let's make progress but now maybe before we we complete this in fact let them come and themselves here okay. as a manufacturer so because you, you're trying to explain someone says it's business and you know we don't understand as uh, it as well as you understand your business okay. Okay. Uh, even tomorrow is fine we will yeah. be here until yeah go ahead, proceed Okay, thank you, Chair. We'll take the direction on that issue. Um, Chair, we also have a proposal around um, close 25 again. Um, this is one we are withdrawing, but it's just also an observation that we got from the imported sugar confectionery um, companies in Kenya, and a lot of them are multinationals. But they were also telling us that, um, you know, the increase rates in terms of what government is proposing is a 100% increase. From, for this sugar confectionery, but this is for imported. So it's an observation from our end and which we withdraw in terms of the proposal that is made there, but you can see what is being proposed from 42, uh, 91 cents to 85, 82 cents, which is just emphasizing what we had said earlier that um, tax increases need to be incremental as opposed to lumping a huge rate. Um, chair, the proposals um, on page 30, 31, and um, 32 are largely on alcohol and which have already been uh, covered by ABAC who are also part of our membership and also page 34 so that we move to page 35 on close 25i um, we are proposing to delete um, close 25i introducing excise duty on the following um, raisin tariff codes that are provided there we've indicated the tariff codes the justification from the industry is that um, recently there was a, a national independent reasons verification exercise that was conducted to confirm capacity that we have, our capacities in Kenya, with regard to manufacturing some of the reasons um, in the country led by the State Department of Industry. And we'll submit that report for purposes of your records. And we were able to confirm that for um, resins, the resins um, that are manufactured in Kenya, we have a list of them, and that there are some which are not um, manufactured here in Kenya, um, which include, of course, um, coil coating and some of the items there. And these are some of the items that we are proposing for deletion, since there is no local capacity. But we'll avail the report, which was supposed to be enclosed um, in this um, report to show the justification for the four items that we are proposing to remove um, from the list and which are not manufactured in Kenya. Um, there's, um, we'll move to the next proposal. It's on close IM. Um, similar, it's to remove, we are proposing a deletion of PVC edge banding classified under the um, HS code. I'll, I'll give this to the affected company to uh, Chair, uh, to point 21, uh, lost the, the introduction of excise on, on PVC products, um, and, and I'm not sure which are the major products it's seeking to protect, but what's happening in this particular case, it's having a cross 
cross-sector impact, which may not have been noticed. Uh, the furniture sector uses PVC in two primary areas. One is for lamination, so we make doors, so we put them through presses and we laminate PVC onto, onto timber, onto MDF. Um, and we use it for edging of uh, cabinet doors. So it's actually quite a key input for furniture manufacturers. Now, it, the, our, the products we import fall under 3920-4390. And those raw materials are not locally manufactured, even within the EAC. And this is specific for furniture. But under this HS code, Chair, there's, it's a very generic, very wide description. If you look at the description, it covers so many articles made from PVC, but it cannot specifically exclude that it does not, those that are not manufactured in EAC. So what we found ourselves in a position is that our inputs since last year have been attracting 25% duty and 25% excise. And we've been seeking somehow a mechanism to exempt furniture manufacturers because we believe that this was not introduced uh, to, 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 to be adverse on our sector, but maybe to protect someone else. Yeah, and, and so, the, so how do we go about that um, is, is a thing, because we've dealt with it for about a year, and it's taken our cost of inputs by, up by 23%. We've also met with the plastic sector, and they've confirmed that these are not products they make. And in fact, we were also seeking duty remission under the EAC uh, budgets as well. So it's sort of conflicting with our ask as an industry. Now, on the one side, we're seeking remission because it's not made, but on the other side, excise has come onto these products. So it's a mechanism to, to remedy for our sector, please. Thank you. Uh, could you go back a bit on this um, imported polymers and vinyl acetates and vinyl Estas. Mm. They proposed 20% uh, uh, import duty. Mm. So, excess, sorry, excess duty. Mm. It, can, is there someone in the sector who would explain what, the, what these differences are and what is the raw material and what is and what is a uh, finished uh, product? Oh, oh, sorry. I'm told they are coming tomorrow themselves, so it's fine. I will listen to them tomorrow. Proceed. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, Chair, will, um, there's a proposal 22 on page 37. It's also on the alcohol sector, so we withdraw that and align with um, um, ABAC. We'll also withdraw the one on 23 on page 38, which was a new proposal, and move to page um, at 39, um, which is a new proposal. and. Um, the Excise Act, um, it's to exempt locally manufactured food supplements from excise duty. Um, we are proposing an insertion of the word imported before the description of uh, food supplements under the Excise Act. Um, this is to promote um, local manufacturing of um, the food supplements. Uh, we've been able to give the justification that um, the taxation structure in the food supplement industry has affected the ability of the local products to compete against the imported products. Um, the excise is charged on uh, both the um, inputs, the raw material, and also the um, fine and also the and also the packaging material, which are their inputs. Um, so it, it's much more cheaper to import some of the food supplements, and the manufacturers of the food supplements are, are proposing that. Um, we we include um, insert the word imported before the description of food supplements because the excise applies to both local manufacturers and the imported products. Um, Chair, we'll move to um, that is the end of the excise proposals that we've made. We'll move to the proposals on the miscellaneous fees and levies act. This one is on the railway development fee. Our proposal was to exempt local manufacturers from the proposed increase. Um, Chair, we had given the, we had shown the um, table that shows um, the fluctuations in terms of how RDL has been increased and we've also been able to show the competitiveness that, um, um, of Kenya against the other EAC countries 
and we've seen that um, the railway development fee is quite low and in some of the countries it's, it's not existing. So we are proposing that um, if this is retained, we exempt local manufacturers, especially for their raw materials and their intermediate products, so that we can ensure that the local manufacturers have a competitive edge and we promote more of manufacturing um, as compared to um, the importation. Um, Chair, we move to page 42. Um, we also have a proposal to amend the uh, Miscellaneous Fees and Levies Act to um, remove craft paper. We've given the HS codes that is listed to attract the export and investment promotion levy. Again, this is one of the materials that um, we've been able to um, confirm that is not um, locally available in terms of the quantities. Hayo walikuwa ni baadhi ya wanachama wa makundi mbalimbali mbali, uh, wakitoa maoni kuhusu 